Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss another comprehensive illustration for the uh, preparation of consolidated statement of financial position. And uh, I have picked up another question for you which is an edited version of the uh, question uh, September 2014 which is an old code for uh, FAR 320. So in this question, we are going to uh, do a comprehensive example for this company. And there are two companies here, Rainbow and Shini, right? And uh, Rainbow and Shini has the year and 30th of June. And if you can see here, the in first information that you have here is the information on the current financial year end. Okay, current financial year end or the reporting date. And if you look at the information given, there are two companies and we are going to look at the requirement. What are we asked to do? You are asked to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position of Rambo Berhad's group, which consists of the parent and the subsidiary as at 30th June 2000 X4 and uh, for your information 30th June 2000 X4 here what you need to do is not just the consolidated statement of financial position uh, you are go also need to know how to calculate the goodwill you need to do some goodwill calculation we also need to know how to calculate non-controlling interest and group reserve so you need to do this you may need to perform some simple consolidation journal entry then we'll be looking at how do we come to the preparation of consolidated statement of financial position so basically you need to do four things before you can uh, actually do the requirement needed which is uh, preparation of consolidated statement of financial position so let's look at what we have here from the beginning so you have the assets and uh, liabilities given here and if you look at the first information that is important is to look who, at who is the parent so if you see here in this section you see there is an investment in Shini by Rainbow. So it is telling us that Rainbow is likely the one to have the control. If you look at the information given here, you have 562,500 from 750,000 ordinary shares of Shini was acquired by Rainbow. So if you were to calculate what are the percentage of the holding company, or the controlling interest, it would be 56 to 500 divided by 750,000 ordinary shares. And that will give you some 75%. And therefore, the NCI is 25%. You also have acquired the debenture. So the debenture that you acquired is the debenture in the subsidiary company and this is 120,000 from that 120,000 here is out of this 800,000 debenture so we need to say that the parent percentage or the holding percentage is um, going to be Earlier was 120, so 120,000 divided by RM 400. So this will give you 30%. And this is uh, going to be the, the one belonging to other debenture holder, which is the remaining 70%. So there is no non-controlling interest for the debenture. If you look at the information given in the shares section here, so this one is the one that you will need to eliminate. And if you notice, this preference shares were not 
acquired. So when preference shares were not acquired by the parent, when we look at the investment that you have here, it is just for ordinary and ordinary shares and debentures. So none of the preference shares are being acquired. So if that is the case, the percentage that belongs to the parent is zero. So basically, parent percentage is nil, and the remain all the debent sorry the uh, preferences belongs to the non controlling interest. So hundred percent belongs to the non controlling interest. So that is the important thing. And here you have the information regarding the shares that were being acquired and the date of acquisition here is first of july 2002 and on that date the general reserve has a balance of hundred thousand and there is a debit balance in the retained profit and these two things this is actually uh, the pre acquisition balance the balance of the reserve of the subsidiary here the subsidiary is shini and that was on the date of acquisition okay now what we're going to do is uh, you can start drawing your template which will include the uh, combination of the uh, asset of the subsidiary with the asset of the parent you can do the the drawing of the template perhaps you can do it here in your own paper something like this right you can do the co combination of that part you can start drawing this kind of template or maybe you can also start putting what uh, the asset of the parent and what what are the asset of the subsidiary and then create column for elimination which is for the adjustment you can do that on your own paper but what i'm going to focus now is not to do that yet i'm going to show you how do we do the consolidation adjustment after we have done the consolidation adjustment we'll be uh, looking at how does that give impact to the schedule of uh, the uh, group reserve and non-controlling interest and also looking at the uh, impact to the um, consolidated statement of financial position in terms of the adjustment for the um, el the elimination of intercompany transaction so you have that information here so number number two first is for you to do the adjustment so i'm going to do that so uh, as you know the date of acquisition date of acquisition is on first of july first of july 2x 20x2 so this is after two years that you will do your consolidation so this is 30th of june 2000x4 so this is the current financial year end. This is the date of acquisition. After two years of acquiring the subsidiary, then you decide that I'm going to do the consolidation. That is the duty of the parent. So here number two, number two, number two is on fair value adjustment. So fair value adjustment, so number two, we're going to look at number two, additional information two. So what are the information here is it tells you that 1st of July 20x2 because that was the date of acquisition. The fair value of the machinery of Shini, Shini is the subsidiary, was revalued to 220. That happened on the date of acquisition. The machinery had a carrying value of 160,000. And that carrying value of 160,000 is not the one on 1st of July 2000X2, not that here, not here, but it is here, 30th of June. 
So what you need to, to understand is this is fair value adjustment on the date of acquisition. So to do that, I'm, I am have prepared for you some workings in advance to cut short the time where you have it here. So in photo, I can put it side by side so that easy for us to. Okay. So this is referring to information two. So if you look at information two, this is on fair value adjustment. So what you need to do is you take the information on fair value, which is two hundred and twenty thousand. Your duty is to see whether there is a surplus or a deficit. So to find the surplus or deficit, you need to find the carrying value on the date of acquisition. You are not given the carrying value on the date of acquisition 1st of July 2000x2. That is not given. However, you can find that by using the information regarding the depreciation. So if you look at the depreciation, the uh, group depreciate the plan and machinery at 20% per annum. This is at carrying value. So you can make use of this uh, information by grossing up the 160,000 for uh, the uh, two years ahead. So you can take the carrying value, 160,000 times 100 over 80, which is to find the one, one year earlier, the carrying value, which is here. And if you want to find the one another year earlier, you will do another 100 over 80, which represent the 20% um, being grossed up. So it gets you 250,000. So therefore, there is a deficit. So this deficit, what you will do is the deficit will need to be adjusted in the working, right? So you need to go and adjust that in your with workings of the fair value of net asset, you need to go and reduce them. So we'll be doing that. How? We'll be doing it here. I'll show you straight away. So that figure that we get just now will be done, will be included here, which is being deducted against the retained profit because deficit or revaluation deficit shouldn't be debited to the asset revaluation reserve it should be debited to the retained profit so i'm going to put a color the yellow there so that deficit there it comes from what you have here in your working this working 30,000 so that will be adjusted in the fair value of an asset and because of the deficit, you also need to do some adjustment for the depreciation. But the journal entry for the deficit is for you to debit retain profit. And this will later be shown in the work schedule, right? Which is the schedule of group reserve and non-controlling interest. And it will be credited to the plan and machinery. So we'll see this later in our preparation of consolidated statement of financial position. But just mark some effect of it later in the schedule or in the CIS of P or the consolidated statement of financial position. You need to deduct in the PPE. You need to deduct in the R retained profit column in the schedule. Okay, that was the first one. Now we look at the second one, which is depreciation adjustment. And if you notice, the depreciation has been over provided because now the asset has a carrying value which is higher than the fair value. The carrying value was 250,000. Therefore, it means that the depreciation of the asset has been over provided by the uh, subsidiary company. Right. So, you will go and reduce, you, uh, the, uh, you will go and 
reduce the depreciation by crediting the retained profit of Shinny by 10,800. Why 10,800? Right? Because uh, this is not the working here. I need to go and de erase this. This is the working here. So you take the 30,000, which is the deficit, times 20%. 20% is this figure here, which is the percentage or the rate of depreciation. And this is just for one year, so 6,000. But we need to know the depreciation adjustment is for two years. From the date of acquisition, 1st of July 2000X2, up till 30th of June 2000X4. So this should be 2000X4. So that was for two years. For that two years, it is six thousand for the uh, for the first year, and the, for the second year, year ending thirtieth June two thousand X four, that is a reducing balance method. Remember, so you will take thirty thousand the deficit minus the depreciation here six thousand, so you have twenty four. So that twenty four thousand multiplied by twenty percent, you have four thousand eight hundred, and that. Um, will give you 10,800. This is a depreciation that you need to go and do adjustment. 10,800. That will be reducing your um, that will be, redu will be reducing your depreciation where in the schedule you are going to go and add them where to? To the retain profit of S in the schedule. In the statement of financial position, the consolidated statement, you will go and add them to the PPE. That was the first one.